Hello there. I'm Sarah, and this is Logan, and we're Vans East. Today we are going to show you our newly renovated Ford Transit 350 extended length, and her name is Lorena, and so we're going to go ahead and give you the tour. One of our biggest missions at Vans East is getting people outside. We're very passionate about outdoor living and outdoor spaces. What we've included in this build is an outdoor table. So not only is this a beautiful feature when you open the door, but it's also very functional and acts as an outdoor picnic area. We like to pull knowledge from our past experiences like sailing to make a better product. Now we've actually replaced our old stainless steel model and use Dyneema rope instead. Dyneema is actually stronger than steel itself. So, pretty neat. One of the neat things about the Ford Transit platform is that it has an extra step. This is great for, you know, utilizing it as a mudroom or shoe cubby or, you know, just hanging out being a stoop kid. Hey Arnold! So we've utilized this space as a mudroom and we have a little shoe cubby that you can slide your shoes off store them in there, and then keep the dirt at bay. As with all our builds, the galley is really important. We got a two burner propane range that is fed by our 40 gallon propane tank mounted underneath the bottom of the vehicle, which is behind the rear axle and clear of it. So we have plenty of ground clearance. This has an AC ignition system. We actually have to turn on the inverter to power this. The ignition is actually powered by the GFCI, so it's safe. We've got a large work area in between the sink and the range, which makes a lot of sense when prepping for food. We created this to fit two RV trash cans. They go in here really nicely. You can do your food prep, throw everything, all the waste in the trash here. Cleaning supplies live underneath. This pantry was built for food and spices. The top is perfect for spice jars. Easy to reach, easy to get to when you're prepping your food here. Underneath, we size these two equally. That'll allow a can of protein, a bottle of wine, will fit nicely in these pantry sections. This large drawer can be used for pots and pans, dishes, etc as will the one below it. So we have a GFCI power outlet, which is powered by 120 volts coming from the inverter. Near the sink, GFCI actually protects you from ground faults, which might happen from a leak or splashing water. You always need to have this near any place that could be wet. Right beneath the GFCI outlet is the switch to turn on the water pump, conveniently located near the sink, of course. One of the requests of our client was for a really simple gray water system. She asked for two five gallon jerry cans beneath the sink so she can empty them more incognito when she's on the road and not have to worry about servicing an undermount gray water system. Here is our Indel B truck fridge. Uh, we've used these in other builds, we love them. This is located beneath the bed. As you can see, it actually has a pretty deep capacity and a handy dandy little freezer with a magnetic lid on top and a locking latch to keep it secure while you're on the road. What we like to do in each build is to build something using traditional carpentry methods. In this case, the open shelf over the galley and sink area that also has undermount lighting is a statement piece made from the same species of wood that'd be oak, just like the countertops and the lagoon tabletop. And we use traditional joining methods to put this together to be a statement piece, but also one that's functional. And we built this with the same design as the open shelf at the end of the overhead cabinets. So for electricity and utility, we have a few things going on. We put our remote starter for the inverter system here in the cabin area. Makes it a lot easier to get to rather than having to go around to the back. We have two dimmer switches on this side, which is port or driver's side. This controls the undermount lighting that goes the entire length of our cabinets. We have another dimmer that controls the overhead lights, which go again from the far forward all the way to the rear of the vehicle. We hung six upper cabinets, five of which have shaker style drawers with rattan inside the framing to allow for breathability, which is great when changing through climates. In this cabinet, we have the control panel. We were really thinking about our client being a solo female traveler. We wanted to make sure that she would be extra safe and not have to go to the back of the van to access any of the electrical items that she would need to. So here, we have our 12 volt distribution panel. We also have the Panaltronic 120 volt AC breaker. Over here, we have the Renogy battery monitor so that she can always monitor the battery usage and how much solar she's getting in. We have two max air fans in this vehicle to create plenty of draft, either when hanging out or when cooking. These are 12 volt 
They can be switched to intake or exhaust. You could actually have the two doing the opposite thing and create an amazing draft. The shiplap ceiling is something that we actually came up with to solve an issue of both saving weight, going with a lighter weight material, and also considering durability because the Ford Transit has two curves. The roof curves this way and then going forward it gets even more extreme coming down towards the nose of the van. We're concerned that standard shiplap would not only be heavy and bulky, but would be under a lot of stress trying to get it to fit in that shape. So we actually built a jig and routed these out ourselves in three sections, allowing greater flexibility and having a lighter weight application with the same aesthetic feel. Shiplap. Among other very special requests to our client that were really important, I think number one for her was a giant bed. This is a big flipping bed. A few moments later. The size of this is actually something between a queen and a king. We custom cut the foam of the mattress to fit the space as well as the protective cover that comes with it. In the rear of the van, we actually have two bunk windows, which are pretty neat. They're awning style, so they open up to allow ventilation and they have a bug screen. You can actually have the van open while it's raining outside. We also wanted to make these window sills functional for storage, be it for an iPad, a phone, or even a glass of wine. In each of the window sills, we actually have two USB charging ports, whether that be for smartphones or tablets, etc. But for small devices, they can actually be charged on either side of the van and up to four can be charged at once on whatever side of the bed that you want to be occupying. <laughs> so we actually have two reading lights in the back of the van that switch on and off locally, which is really convenient, but they actually pivot back and forth 180 degrees and rotate 360 degrees, which makes them super neat, functional, and flexible. We created an additional workstation over here, both for food prep opposite of the galley, but also as a crafting area as our client requested work areas to do all of her crafting. Underneath this workstation, we have two drawers like the others. They have 15 pound locking receivers and soft close uh, sliders to keep them in place. We created what could be either a laundry hamper or a hanging closet. And this is where we have the composting toilet, which was something that the client requested. We put it on locking drawer slides that can hold 500 pounds. It's similar to what they use in ambulances. It locks in place shut. It has these latches and grips to unlock and open. And then it's locked in place as well. So you don't have to worry about parking on a hill and sliding in when you're sitting on the head here. So this is the couch and lounge area that we created for two purposes. We created a workstation that's adjustable with this lagoon table. We used a white oak butcher block to match the countertop in the other work area. We also provided power for her sewing machine over here. This is a 120 volt power station that runs off our inverter. And then we have additional USB chargers here. And beneath the couch, we have two areas for storage. This one actually fits a whole sewing kit. We designed this around the equipment that she has. Set it up here, here, plug it in. But when she's just trying to relax with her and her little dog, this large storage area also turns this couch into an L-shaped couch lounge and will support 300 pounds. You could actually sit on it. You could relax and sprawl out. There you have it. One of the other neat functions with the swivel seat and the couch is that you can actually have a little guest bed. The same pad that's used for the couch extension to make the L-shaped lounge um, also goes on top of the driver's seat to raise the level to the very same level as the couch for a little sort of day bed or guest bed. I'm actually 5'10 and I've got a little bit of room to stretch out too. I'm quite comfortable actually. Yeah. <laughs> You can't take a nap on me now, come on. It's a minor design flaw, the stock Transit has the standard e-brake, which sits too high when you install a swivel seat for the swivel seat to turn. The swivel seat will turn and it'll interfere with the e-brake. We had to modify and lower the mounting point for the e-brake. So we actually use some of the birch plywood to make a little housing that just matches everything, it covers up sharp metal, which otherwise would have just been hanging out. We took this forward overhead area and actually built and installed a shelf that allows easy access with jackets, bags, whatever you might need kind of on the go. On the face of this, we mounted a curtain track. We actually don't have the curtain installed currently because the client wanted to sew it herself, but we are able to separate the cabin from the main living area 
sliding a curtain out easily on these cool little carts, which we like to use in our builds. We also installed two swivel seats in both the captain's and the passenger chair for additional living and lounge area for once you get set up at camp. Hello from the garage troll. Welcome to our very large and in charge garage. So as you can see, we have an 80-20 aluminum bed frame that we built. Over here, we have our electrical box. We made this box super accessible for our client. You made these doors that slide so you have easy access to whatever side of the electrical cabinet you need. And also, they are removable. So you can remove the doors and you have complete access to the entire electrical box to work on anything. In here we have a 30 amp Renogy solar charge controller that's fed by 400 watts of Renogy solar panels up top. That feeds into our 200 amp hours of Renogy lithium iron phosphate batteries. That then goes to our bus bars, into our 12 volt distribution panel that's actually upstairs. We also have a 2000 watt Ames inverter charger. Also hooks up to our shore power hookup and we have a switch to turn on our shore power right here. We also have a Renogy 20 amp DC to DC charger that runs off the alternator when the car is running. So we can charge our batteries in three different ways. We have wraparound LED lights that are controlled on the switch here that illuminate the garage. And also at night, not only do we have reading lights, but they also serve as outdoor lights. Over on this side of the garage, we have all of our water components. So we have our outdoor shower, along with our 25 gallon freshwater tank. We also have a sure flow water pump, a gravity fill, and a water drop water filter. Our client specifically wanted an outdoor shower. She didn't want to dedicate space inside the van and was actually really excited about showering out in nature. So we have included a gas powered outdoor shower that's on locking drawer slides. All you have to do when you're ready to shower is slide this out, make sure the water's on, Take a shower. It's very quick. And when you're done, just slide her back in. Easy as that. Up here, we have our two 200 watts of Renogy solar panels, which produce 400 watts of solar to be our main power source for the whole vehicle. But maybe most importantly, we have a roof deck that we built uh, out of a Trex composite to have both a lounge area for a couple of people, a little mini dance party. Thanks for watching to the end of this video and like and subscribe. Stay tuned for our next build. We have a four wheel drive, 170 inch wheelbase Mercedes Benz Sprinter that's coming up next.